Hey everyone, welcome to 59 Tops Friday presented by Wax Pack Wisdom, where we talk baseball history through the cards we love. My name is Jake T. O'Donnell. We built the iconic 1959 Tops baseball set, and in this series we're going through every card to talk about the players, teams, and people who made up Major League Baseball in 1959. Today we'll cover cards 219 through 227 in the set. Card number 219 belongs to George Zuverink of the Baltimore Orioles. 1959 was Zuverink's eighth and final season in the big leagues. Zuverink was drafted during World War II, spending a few years serving in the military in the Pacific. Following the war, he played for some minor league teams. Zuv, as he was known to teammates, was a right-handed pitcher who spread his time in the big leagues between the Indians, Red Legs, Tigers, and Orioles. He was known as a sidearm sinker baller, his overall win-loss record was 32-36 and 36 with an ERA of 3.54. Zuverink went into the insurance field following his major league career. He refereed and umpired for high school and college baseball and basketball games. He was inducted into the Grand Rapids Hall of Fame in 2009. Zuverink died in 2014 at the age of 90 from complications following a hip fracture. Card number 220 belongs to Frank Malzone of the Boston Red Sox. 1959 was his fifth season in the big leagues. During the years when Ted Williams entered the twilight of his career, and before Collier Stremski turned into a young superstar, Frank Malzone was the finest player on a Red Sox team that did not give the Fenway faithful much to cheer about otherwise. Signed out of the Bronx as a teenager, Malzone missed time serving in the military and did not debut for the Red Sox until 1955. He finally became their regular third baseman in 1957, and he was an all-star, a gold glove winner, and finished second in Rookie of the Year balloting that year. Malzone would win the gold glove again the next two years, and had five more all-star appearances over the next three years. Malzone was a consistent 15-20 to 20 homer, 280-290 to 290 average contributor for the Red Sox into the mid-60s. His play declined in 1965, and he was released after the season. Malzone spent one season with the Angels and then retired. Malzone returned to New England, and he spent most of the rest of his life working in some capacity for the Red Sox organization. He was chiefly an advanced scout and also worked with young players as a spring training instructor. Card number 221 belongs to Bob Bowman of the Philadelphia Phillies. 1959 was Bowman's fifth and final season in the big leagues. Bowman was a right fielder, pinch hitter, and later relief pitcher for five seasons, all with the Phillies. Bowman held the record for the highest pinch hitting batting average in 1958, and the record for the most pinching appearances for a position player in 1959. Bowman recalled that he had to relearn how to throw to make the transition from pitcher to outfield, where he believed was his best chance of playing in the major leagues. His efforts to perfect his throw paid off. He became known to have one of the best throwing arms in the National League. Following the 1958 season, Bowman played in Venezuela in the offseason, where he banged into the wall in the outfield, injuring his knee. He would credit his less than stellar 1959 season, and ultimately the end of his major league career, to this injury. Bowman batted 249 in 256 major league games with 17 homers over his career. He played a few seasons of minor league ball after the 1959 season. And he had a chance conversation with another expectant father while at the hospital for the birth of one of his children, which resulted in a 30-year career for a liquor distributor. Bowman was said to have a high acumen for fishing. Here's a fun fact. Bowman's great-grandparents are said to have taken the Oregon Trail in the 1850s in search of a better life out west. Bowman died in 2017 at the age of 86. Card number 222 belongs to Bobby Chance of the New York Yankees. 1959 was his 11th season pitching in Major League Baseball. Chance was local to the greater Philadelphia area when he was signed by the Athletics at the older age of 23 in the late 1940s. At 5 foot 6 inches tall, he was considered too small to be an effective pitcher, but he disproved that from the get-go. He had a 3.40 ERA his rookie year in 1949 and made his first AL All-Star team in 1951. In 1952, Chance was spectacular. He led the AL with 24 wins and had a 2.48 ERA in 279 and two-thirds innings. He showed elite control, walking just 63 batters all year. For this, he won the 1952 American League Most Valuable Player Award. 
Chance dealt with shoulder issues the next few years and became a reliever for the A's after they moved to Kansas City. Chance was traded to the Yankees ahead of the 1957 season. Casey Stengel tried Chance in the rotation to great success as he led the AL in ERA at 2.45. That year, Chance was also recognized for his prowess as the finest fielding pitcher of his era, winning the first of eight consecutive Gold Glove awards. He pitched six and two-thirds innings for the Yankees in their losing effort in the 1957 World Series. Chance returned to a bullpen role after 1958, and he pitched in relief in the 1960 World Series, and was particularly effective in Game 7, which the Yankees would eventually lose. Chance bounced around from 1961 through 1964, rounding out his career with the Pirates, Colt 45s, Cardinals, Cubs, and his hometown Phillies. He worked in the restaurant business after his playing career ended, and he was inducted into the Phillies Wall of Fame in 1994. As of this recording, Bobby Chance is 98 years old. He will turn 99 in September of 2024. Chance is the oldest living player with a card in the 1959 top set. He is the oldest living former MVP winner and the last living player to have played for Connie Mack. In February of this year, Chance was filmed appearing at an autograph signing where he went through a binder of 1952 Topps cards, recounted his old teammates and competitors, and signed his card from his MVP season. Card number 223 is the Cardinals team checklist. The checklist on the back of the card covers cards 265 to 352 in the set. From the 1920s through the 1940s, the Cardinals were one of the most consistent teams in baseball, regularly winning pennants and World Series in no small part thanks to the revolutionary scouting and farm system methods of legendary executive Branch Rickey. But the 1950s were a different story for the Redbirds. Their best finish of the decade was second place in 1957, but they were a team that featured the legendary batting of Stan Musial and the solid contributions of young third baseman Ken Boyer, but not much else. In 1959, the Cards finished 7th out of 8 NL teams with a 71-83 and 83 record. Boyer hit 309, won a gold glove, and finished 10th in MVP voting. But the most significant event of the 1959 season for the Cardinals happened on April 15th, when a young right-handed pitcher from Nebraska named Bob Gibson made his MLB debut. It was impossible to know at the time, but Gibson would eventually be the central figure to lead the Cardinals back to glory in the 1960s. Card number 224 belongs to Claude Osteen of the Cincinnati Redlegs. 1959 was Osteen's second season in the big leagues. Osteen was known as Gomer because some believed that he resembled Gomer Pyle of the Andy Griffith Show. Osteen was a left-handed pitcher who played for the Redlegs, Senators, Dodgers, Astros, Cardinals, and White Sox. He signed with Cincinnati right out of high school, reportedly rejecting offers from at least 10 other teams. Osteen went from the Reds to the Senators, and then the Dodgers, where he would develop into being known as a top-notch starter and workhorse. His ERA was under three in 1965 and 1966, and he was an all-star in 1967, 1970, and 1973. He was a member of the 1965 World Champion Dodgers, where he held his own, including a 0.64 ERA for the series, a 1-1 record, and a shutout. Osteen would play in the 1966 World Series, with the, which the Dodgers would lose to the Orioles. In 1972, he was 20 and 11 with a 2.64 ERA in 252 innings pitched. Osteen would end his major league career with the White Sox in 1975. He had 196 wins, 1,612 strikeouts, and a 3.30 ERA for the entirety of his career. He remained active in the major leagues as a pitching coach for the Cardinals, Phillies, Rangers, and Dodgers. He also spent time coaching in the minor leagues. As of this recording, Osteen is 84 years old and turns 85 in August of 2024. Card number 225 belongs to Johnny Logan of the Milwaukee Braves. 1959 was Logan's ninth season in the big leagues. Logan would spend time serving in the military before joining a minor league team under the Braves, where an unfortunate accident would knock out both of his front teeth. Logan would spend the first 10 years of his career with the Braves organization, where he arguably had some of the best moments of his career as a player. He would go on to play for the Pirates for three years. He spent 13 years playing professional baseball in the U.S., and then would spend one final year with the Nankai Hawks in Japan. He was a four-time All-Star with the Braves. Arguably, his best season was 1955, playing all 154 games, maintaining a batting average of 297, 
and he led the National League in doubles. He was a member of the 1957 World Series champion Braves. In Game 2 of the 1957 World Series, he hit the first home run of the series. Logan would become the first baseball player to win an American World Series and a Japan Series. After retiring from professional baseball, he remained a pillar in the Milwaukee community as a founding member of the Milwaukee Braves Historical Society, and he remained a regular at Brewers games. Logan died in 2013 at the age of 87. Card number 226 belongs to Art Ciccarelli of the Chicago Cubs. 1959 was Ciccarelli's fourth season in the big leagues. Ciccarelli was a pitcher who threw left and batted right, and he would spend his five non-consecutive seasons in the major leagues between the Athletics, Orioles, and Cubs. Ciccarelli's baseball career was interrupted by two years of military service. During off-seasons in his baseball career, he would attend classes at Southern Connecticut State University, where he also served as a pitching coach. He would go on to teach high school history and English in his native Connecticut. Ciccarelli died in 2012 at the age of 82. Card number 227 belongs to Hal W. Smith of the Kansas City Athletics. 1959 was Smith's fifth season in the big leagues. Smith was mostly a catcher over the course of 10 big league seasons with the Orioles, A's, Pirates, Colt 45s, and Reds. His best season came in 1957 when he batted 303 and hit 13 home runs for the A's. In 1960, he was the backup catcher to Smokey Burgess on the Pirates team that would go on to win the World Series. Smith went 3 for 8 in the World Series and hit a dramatic home run in the 8th inning of Game 7, although Bill Mazeroski would later take the glory with his walk-off homer in the 9th. After his playing career, Smith worked as a steel company salesman in the Houston area, and he died in 2020 at the age of 89. That's going to do it for this edition of 59 Tops Friday on Waxpack Wisdom. Today's episode was written by Abby O'Donnell and Jake T. O'Donnell. Do you have a story about one of the people, players, or teams we discussed today? Let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our Waxpack Wisdom content. In the video description, you will find our source material for this episode, links to where you can follow us on all social media channels, as well as a list of our favorite nonprofits and charities. Please consider a donation to one of them if you enjoyed this content. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Waxpack Wisdom. Take care.